We are back here, Ethan Claire Podcast Show. Good to be back here, and it is the fifty-sixth episode of the Five podcast. Six. Five six, yeah, big episode here, and we are in the month of October, so we're kind of focusing on creepy, um, not well, not just creepy, but like Halloween-related things. That's so. why Colin's here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good, huh? yeah, that's why Colin's back on the podcast. So, um, I was I was actually going to start off wearing the wearing the mask, so I can throw that on now here. The demon mask, because I, I thought that would be that only be fitting for this episode. But um, so, like I was talking about Halloween related stuff, we are going to be here next week, and we're going to be talking. Hopefully, I'm going to try to get Adrian on, and we can do some like ghost related stuff. Ah, nice. But this week, we are going to be focused more on demon related stuff. So it is good to have Tom Urban back on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Now, Tom, you were on, <laughs> and when was that? This was about the same time last year, wasn't it? Maybe uh, were you in October or a little before October? It was either September or October. And we kind of went through a lot of the tools and stuff you had, right? You were bringing your toolbox with. Yep. And you were showing us, and really, I had no idea that this, this stuff was like used for that. I've never, I had no idea about it. Mm-hmm. And Damon wasn't here. I was so not here. So this is going to be a big. Uh, like educational, educational episode for you. So Damon Wynat, co-host of the podcast. Great to have you, Damon. Great to be here. And Colin Clare, co-host of the podcast. Always good to be here. Great to have you. And so let's just jump right in and um, talk about some of this stuff. But before we do, actually, I shouldn't say that because we have a topic that we talked about last week and something just came up. What? You, you remember what we talked about last week? Don't test me right now, Ethan. It's been a long day. I'm tired to drive up. <laughs> we talked about serial killers last oh, yeah, week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yep. sure did. Yep. And yep. I don't know if anyone, any of you guys heard about this, but just the other day, a guy came forward and confessed to killing 90 women. And oh. it is, he is being called the worst serial killer in the history of the United States. I have not heard that. And it's weird that we just talked about, we did an entire episode on serial killers, and then this guy comes out and admits to all of them. So I have a little story about it here, Colin, if you want to click on there. Um, just because I thought it'd be relevant to talk about. No, it's oh. down. Down, 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 right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll check this out here. At first, the FBI were wary of Samuel Little's claim that he killed 93 people. Now they say they do believe him, confirming him as America's most prolific serial killer. Even more chilling, his sketches of the young women he murdered. Police hope these pictures will help identify who these victims were, in many cases, decades after their deaths. Victims like the woman he calls Marianne, killed in Florida in 1972. And pulled deeper into the path, a little path of what is somewhere, I don't know where it led it to. Those confessions reveal what police say is a photographic memory for the details of his crimes. This woman was murdered in Kentucky in 1984. This white girl come out behind the building. Yeah, I'm in my trunk. She walked over to me, say, uh, come on, you know, can you take me to Miami? And how he met this woman, he says he murdered in Las Vegas in 1993. So the boy came, she left her son. And she called him over there. And he came over, hey, I yeah, he shook my hand and everything. The killings took place across the country and spanned 35 years. Little is already serving three life sentences in prison in California. It was the work of the detective you can hear in these interviews that began to join the dots. How far outside of Las Vegas do you think you were? Were you in Las Vegas? Or? About, I was still in Las Vegas, yeah. He suggests his motive is just killing. There was something in him that liked to kill and unfortunately he was very good at finding potential victims. Many of those killed by Little were originally ruled as accidents or overdoses. Some bodies have never been found. The FBI is asking for the public's help. A combination of DNA and Samuel Little's own words confirming to them the full horror of his crimes. Greg Milam, Sky News. Now, I don't understand. They have a picture here of all these different mug shots. Must so, have been arrested for other things. Or yeah, other things yeah. I don't know. Been in jail for a while. Isn't that crazy, though? Over 93 women in, what would it say, 35 years? Yeah. Which I don't think, I mean, we talked about serial killers, but that is a number that we never talked about last week. I mean, we, we covered some crazy people, but a number like that is unheard of, it almost seems like. Yeah, or they have uh, no words to say after no. watching that. You know? I mean, it's it just came out, it's brand new, um, and it's crazy that he got away with it for that long. I think a lot of them are, he was going after prostitutes and people that didn't really have people worrying about them as much as if it were just a normal person on the street, you know, so I think... 
Um, it, I saw this. Uh, someone told me about it and had to look it up, and I'm, I couldn't believe that it was actually happening right after we talked about it. Well, and we talked about it, how race was involved, and I did a little research after the podcast, too, because you had some numbers. Yeah. And he was African-American, if you're listening at home. Yeah. Um, but we talked about how most of them we feel were, like, Caucasian yeah. and white, but I think uh, from what I read, it was more that those just get more coverage. Yeah, I, I know, think they do, yeah. But, I mean, there is a higher percentage probably as yeah. well, but I mean. Well, and all the, the 93 women he killed, they were all African-American. Every single yeah. one of them was. So he was targeting that specific race which is very interesting to it me. It seems like those serial killers target a certain yeah. type or yeah. and, and a lot mean, of them are like you said hitchhikers or yeah. prostitutes or yep. people that um, some people might not be looking for. Yeah, people that are kind of laying out low. there on the roads or hitchhikers. Yep. yep. And yep. well, to kind of tie these two together, Tom, when you see stuff like this, is there potential that these people and we kind of talked about this la- uh, last week about what they're like what they're <laughs> What's driving them to do this? But is there potential that these people could be have demonic forces in them that are causing them to do this kind of stuff? Oh, it's always possible. There's been plenty of cases where people have claimed demonic possession or there have been confirmed cases of demonic possession and people have been killed. Really? Something like that. I'm thinking he's just more hollowed than anything. Really? Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't really have a soul. He doesn't care about people. Yeah, pretty much. Huh. That's interesting Yeah, the to way me. he's talking, just nonchalant. and Yeah, he was really... Story. Ethan, did you hear about this? The nine-year-old what? to face five murder charges in deadly fire. No, I hadn't heard about this either. I think it happened in Houston. Oh, never mind. Illinois. In Illinois. Do they have a video about it here? We'll play it if there's something. I. When did this the- happen? Today or yesterday, I think. In downstate Illinois to charge a nine-year-old boy with first-degree murder for a deadly mobile home fire. It happened back in April near Peoria and killed five people, three of them children. Neighbors say the young suspect escaped the fire with his mother. He's going to need some way to cope with that. You know, what he, I don't know if he understands what he's really done. Well, the boy is also charged with arson and aggravated arson. According to the Associated Press, no child as young as this one has ever been accused in a mass killing since at least 2006. Wow. How old was he? Nine years old? Mm-hmm. I, don't th- I didn't think that uh, someone that young could be charged like that because they, really, they don't really understand the implications of their crime. I didn't think that was how it worked. But I guess, I, like she said, it was the first time anything like this has ever happened before. Yeah. So even looking at something like that, um, it makes you wonder if there's something else at play to cause someone. And we don't know the circumstances, obviously. But, you know, you wonder, like you mentioned, there has been people who've done it before. Is that something that could get, like, they can bring up in court as, like, a reason for it? Oh, absolutely not. The court's oh, really? only really interested in the facts, and the facts are basically things which are quantifiable. Yep. When you start dealing in things like possession, demons, stuff like that, the court's not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Mm. But do people ever <laughs> try to pull that out, Like kind of like the insanity plea? Do they ever try pulling that out to try to cover themselves? Oh, I've, I've seen stories of it done multiple times. Really? Even people that are claiming to do exorcisms and end up killing somebody or just wow. grievously harming them. Like I saw one years ago of some some woman, she clawed her daughter's eyes out in the middle of the road because she thought she was doing an exorcism. Really? Wow, I never heard about that. That's crazy. When people do, I mean, we could kind of go into that too. When people do exorcisms and, and stuff like that, is it something that you have to be trained to do? Or do you not even think it's something that is can be done? Like Like the Catholic priest coming and doing a traditional exorcism. Is that real or is that something more myth no it's real exorcism can be done but Mm. the idea that only uh the catholic priests can do it is ludicrous that's not true well think of all the societies and cultures that have existed before the catholic church Mm. or before the catholic church expanded Mm. you know you had shamans and medicine men that would do exorcisms you know yeah all kinds of stuff like that even the ancient egyptians how come the Catholics kind of pre, uh, has have it as their own thing then? Like I know when you look at Christians and you look at the different, um, what do you call it, the different uh, branches, denominations? Denominations, yeah. Isn't Catholic the only one that claims they can do it? Catholic is the only one that claims they can do it, and they're the only ones that will openly accept that it's a possibility. Mm. But, I mean, if you look at the history of the Catholic Church, I mean, they've basically, you know, taken over. I mean, each religious uh denomination you know you do the nicene creed and it's i believe in the holy catholic church mm. so even if you're not catholic you're still basically you know saying you believe in the catholic church hmm. 
And is that something that they took and ran with it and other denominations just decided to push away for some reason? Or how did that kind of separate into different things? You know, I'm sure it was just like, you know, Martin Luther when he nailed his thing to the door and, you know, he started Lutheranism. I mean, eventually, yeah, eventually people just kind of think, hey, maybe there's more or, hey, I've got a great idea and mm. they branch out into different directions. Yeah. Well, and when you say that other people can do it besides a ca- like Catholic priest, how does somebody pick up the skills or the necessary things to be able to do that to somebody and actually do it right where you're not killing somebody like you said? Well, a lot of it depends on how much research you're going to be willing to put into it. Mm. I mean, there's books and books and books of demonology. Yep. Frankly, they're all regurgitating the exact same facts over and over again. Hmm. This demon is this sin. This demon is this sin. Honestly, if you study it and approach it scientifically, you know, think of demon as a negative charge. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is make the environment completely uninhabitable. Oh. So you basically need to adjust the wavelength of the living being to drive out the uh, negative being. So it all has to come down to energy and and what's in the air. Well, Nikola Tesla said himself, everything is energy. Yeah. Well, that it's kind of interesting you talk about that because when we talk about ghosts, we talk about the same kind of thing. Are you a believer in paranormal, spiritual ghost type things, or is it more just demon? Oh no, I believe in all of it. You know, ghosts, angels, demons. You know, cryptids, mm. the Nephilim. Yeah. I mean, I honestly believe that over the centuries, you know, all the things we were told that are out there, yeah, really were out there. Really. Huh. Are all demons fallen angels, or is there a difference? Well, your originals were definitely the fallen angels. If you go back and follow the story of Lilith, which was uh, Adam's original wife, she refused to submit. So she left, and she actually uh, fell into a group with a demon. You know, they got together, and she actually gave birth to demons, which is why Lilith is called the mother of demons. Now, when you say Adam, what do you mean by, like, Adam and Eve? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I didn't know. Okay, I've never heard that before. So where? how did that form, or where did that come from? I'm not exactly sure as to what the source was. Yeah. I want to say it was uh, Jewish lore, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Don't quote me on that. But... No, that's all right, yeah. Well, you start, right, because is Satan the first ever actual demon, like the devil? Is he the first one? Well, or was there, any, was there some before that? Well, technically, he's not a demon. He's an angel. Fallen angel, right? Yeah, he's imprisoned, kind of like all the watchers who gave birth to the Nephilim, the fathers of the Neph. Yeah, they're all angels, and they're all locked away. Nephilim, so is that people that are in hell with Satan? No, the Nephilim were uh, Genesis 6, and the sons of man gazed upon the daughters of man, or the sons of heaven gazed upon the daughters of man and thought they were beautiful Mm. and took them as wives. Huh. So what are they? Mm. Like, why, what's the purpose of them? They were an abomination. If you actually look through the book of Enoch, it was all part of a plan to corrupt, you know, this perfect race. Really? So are they something that Satan created to to help him torment people? Or I'm because I'm just trying to figure out are they working together? Are they separate entities? Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Uh, personally I think they may be going for the same goal, but to say they're, you know, Directly in cahoots, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Hmm. Well, and when you when you say the book of Enoch, what is that referring? I mean, I've never heard of that before. What is that referring to? There's actually a book of the Bible that was removed, and it is an expansion of Genesis. Really? It goes in depth as to uh, the Nephilim and their whole rise and how far they spread, and what the actual nature of the Nephilim was. Because the Nephilim only did three things: eat, kill, and fornicate. Really? But there was actually something in their DNA that allowed them to uh, successfully mate with anything that they would breed with. Really? Now, here's a little food for thought. Go back and look at any ancient culture, you know, Egyptians, Babylonians, Assyrians. Yep. They're uh, half man, half animal gods. Mm. I mean, even the ancient Egyptians where they have the hieroglyphics where you have the gods that are bigger than everybody else or the pharaohs that are bigger. Yeah. It could have very well been Nephilim bloodline. Really? Because I did some research, and there was like 14 or 18 different tribes of giants. One was actually the tribe of Moab, the same Moab that was that bomb that got dropped in Afghanistan. Really? 
Well, well, it's we talk about giants. We, I say we just they, talked about giants two two or three ago. podcasts ago. What was um, Sherman's um, reasoning that people could grow so big back then? Um, well, they were in the Bible, so that was a jump off of. But was it because they could they live? Because the remember, they were living. Oh, they could to, move. They were stronger, so they could move the pyramids. Still. Yeah, they were that? living longer though. They were living to be nine hundred. Oh yeah, perhaps. Yeah, because in the Bible it says King o- King Og from the Bible. He time. was one of the taller. Wasn't he a giant? He was a bigger. That sounds familiar. Yeah, because we talked about this with Sherman. and um, He was like well, eight or remember, nine feet. I yeah, think. he was a tall guy. Um, but I was trying to figure out why these people could grow to be so big back then and how come people now aren't growing to be that big. Well, I mean, it still goes back to the whole debate about the Nephilim. I mean, if you do the math for the conversion for how tall the Nephilim were, like your smaller Nephilim were about 12 feet. Your bigger oh. Nephilim were closer to 32 to 35 feet tall. Really? Wow. And you said they could be half animal, half human? Uh, half animal, half Nephilim, which oh, you know, are okay, basically okay. giant humans. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. That, I mean, that it makes sense because you talk about the hieroglyphics and stuff like that, and those are in there. Mm-hmm. So it makes you wonder, is that what they were seeing? And how come... Yeah, that's. I, I guess we've never never talked about yeah, that with we, Sherman before. We were relating the triangle with that and aliens. and Yeah, um, we, we were jumping all over the place with it. Um. So when you're talking about like the Nephilim and stuff like that, and this book that was removed from the Bible, Enoch, 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 E N O C H. Okay, how come it was taken out, or why? Why do most denominations, or there's some that keep it in there in the Bible? Well, if you think about it, the uh, the Bible was agreed upon at the Council of Nicaea, and that was where Constantine kind of claimed to claim to Christianity. To mm. uh, it was basically a big political move. Really? But at the Council of Nicaea, they basically agreed as to what books go in the Bible, when religious holidays are going to be. I mean, everything that, you know, is religiously observed was all part of a political act. Really? Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. And they decided at that point to remove the book from the Bible Mm -hmm. because of the Nephilim, or they didn't want the negativity? That I couldn't tell you, but there was many, many books that were removed from the Bible. Oh, really? I didn't know there was more than than just the one or whatever that you brought up. Yeah. I mean, allegedly, there was like a book of Judas, a book of Mary Magdalene. I mean, there were plenty of books that could have been, but were removed. Like the Hobbit, they wanted to break it up, you know, to sell, yeah. sell more books. More That's movies. crazy. I mean, it, it's I I've never heard that before. That part of it before. No. Are there denominations that some denominations that have kept that in, kept any of these in? Um, that I couldn't say for sure. Because I know I know like the main like Lutheran Catholic they don't have uh, they don't have those in there. Maybe not Presbyterian doesn't. Methodist doesn't. So I'm wondering if anyone or if everyone just agreed to take it out, which is weird to me that they would decide to take something that was... Because the Bible um, is written in the word... Or in the... What do you want to call it? The um, written... I can't even think of what I'm trying to say. I think written with like the... Got, written through by man, but like through God. Oh. Or God like moved these men to write the Bible, I right? Like so something. I wonder why they would take something out if it was supposed to be you know from God inspired that's what i'm looking for god inspired them to write these books so i wonder why they would take some out keep other ones in yeah i i couldn't tell you these are the difficult questions yeah yeah we need to we need to figure that out um another question i wanted to ask kind of where i was going before is you were talking about uh like reading and a lot of if you want to do exorcisms as mm. research and stuff like that how did you kind of come into doing this maybe we talked about this before i can't exactly remember but how did you kind of get into doing this um, I personally take more of a holistic approach. You know, I've got the big encyclopedia of herbs. I've got the encyclopedia of metals and stones. Mm. If you go through and actually do your study, there are more than enough uh, herbs and stones and metals that do have exorcism and purification properties. Really? So like that bottle of demon dust I had uh, the last time we were together. Yep. Yeah, that was concocted using all stuff that has exorcism and purification properties. Really? What are the properties that would make something be useful in an exorcism? Usually anything with like a holy connotation. Like, you know, you got the oils of the Bible, like frankincense, myrrh, stuff like that. 
Frankincense is extremely potent. Really? Extremely potent. So that's something that if someone was possessed by a demon, you could pull that out and that would extract or make the demon angry to leave? Or what would? how would that work? Uh, well, first thing you got to do is break the hold. Because by the time a demon's really set into the point where they're taking the person over, they got a pretty tight hold in there. Mm. I mean, think of like uh, those... Uh, those little catfish, like the ones from the Amazon, will swim up uh, people's oh. various orifices, and yeah. then they got the Jeez. barbs. Yeah. yeah Same concept. You can't really pull them out, because no. they jab in. So what you got to do is force them to break the hold. Mm. And you, so, are we going to ask him? I was, I was just curious, do you feel the herbalistic is, it works better because, like, say a cross, you see a lot of, you know, in the movies or exorcisms, holding up a cross, but that really is a symbol that man kind of gave to religion and is that um what's the word i'm looking for is that recognized by a demon or is that just more of a symbol status or giving the person holding the cross feel like they give them more confidence and power or well here's the question what do you do when you have a demon that's older than christianity Mm -hmm. oh you got a demon that's older than christianity he's just going to look at a cross and laugh at you Mm -hmm. so but they but they realize the frankincense and myrrh Mm -hmm. even though that was part of the bible yeah, but it's still, you know, a naturally occurring compound. Okay. So from a holistic standpoint, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's a demon from, you know, the first week of creation or if it's, you know, a demon from two weeks ago. Wow. The holistic properties remain the same. There are demons from the beginning of time that are still going after people to this day? There was actually, it was supernatural that touched on the uh, idea, you know, in the beginning, the earth was void and dark and all that stuff, mm-hmm. that... uh it wasn't exactly uninhabited, so when the darkness was driven back, that darkness took things with it. Really? Huh. But there are, are they still, like, uh, um, demons from that creation, or, like, from the beginning of time, are they still around to this day? Oh, I'm sure they are. Really? Wow. And when, because I know demons have names, right? There's different names for demons. Yeah. How would you be able to figure out and call a name of a demon? Because I've seen exorcists do it before. Uh, the one time I had to go after one by name, we actually used a pendulum. And oh. uh, we narrowed it down as to what kind of demon we were dealing with. And then as soon as we said the name, the pendulum started swinging so hard that the chain would go slack. Really? Wow. What was the name of that demon, if we can ask? Cain. Cain. Wow. And Because I, I, when I was doing some research for the podcast, I was on some... I can't remember the name of the website... Um, it was like a demon encyclopedia, and it had all and there's there's so many on there, and it kept talking about presidents, and I didn't know what they were talking about. Does that mean anything to you? It said president of the tenth. Maybe you could look up demon encyclopedia con and see um, if you could, because I was trying to find um, trying to find some of these demons, and it kept saying president, and I didn't know what it was talking about. Well, I know in the demon hierarchy, you've got like your lords of hell, your princes of hell, so on and so forth. I'm sure it just, you know, whittles down to a point where you have, like, the president, the mayor, that guy on the yeah, corner. Yeah, I saw mayor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was one of them on there. And some of them were, they were talking about Joseph and Mary and different names like that on there. And I couldn't really wrap my head around what they were trying to say by by including those names from the Bible in there. Like, why, I, if I could find this website, I could show you what I'm talking about. Come on, go back here. Um... I just typed in demon names or something, demon name encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. Oh, if I can remember the name of that website, demon name encyclopedia, because there was a lot of um, interesting. Now keep going. Let's see, I'd remember the name. You new world. Go go back go back that website you were on that kind of looked like it actually or that top that demon sand. No, go back. What are we? What are you looking for? Like There's names a, of demons? Yeah, it's like a that knowledge database column right there. At the this top. One? Yeah, the demon encyclopedia. I feel like this is the one that I was on. I feel types de- of demons. Do demon quick lists maybe? I don't know. There you go. Okay, but yeah, here we go. So they're talking about the different. Okay, so yeah, here's all the names. Okay, so let's see if we can find like the president, or if they're talking about. So king. All right, go stop going. So, so like. Demon of music, sun god, much like Lucifer, god of quarrels. There must be a lot because you're still in the A's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I was saying. There's so many on here. But they're, I mean, they bring in a lot of weird names like Grand Duke of Hell, Aim, um, Prince of Hell, 
mother of all demons, queen of spirits of the dead, a king of hell. So they have different things like that. And I saw a president on there. And I, I wish I could find the one where it was talking about like Adam or Eve or Mary and stuff like that because they, they had different names on there of people. And it was just really interesting to me. Have you seen all like these before though? They pop up like you've seen, had to use or research this before? Uh, only a few times have I had to deal with ones that were actually, you know, of that level. Luckily, we caught him early, like right when he came across, and uh, we were able to knock him back down before uh, he gained enough power to be dangerous. How do they gain power? Is it through time? It's through time, through just the general negativity of people. You get some that are sadistic enough. I mean, possess people, devour people. It all Mm. depends on what it is that's coming across. How does somebody pick up something like this? Are there things or places or things that can happen to you that would cause you to have a greater effect of getting a demon or like from you the people that get fr- possessed. Yeah. Like the people from you've seen, cause you've done it before. Yeah. Th- do they share a common ground like to what, what's happened to them or things they've done or places they've gone? Or... Not always. Really? No, there hasn't been anything that you can narrow down and say, well, these two, <laughs> You're this, getting into the psychology of demons. Psychology like, of demons. Like yeah. Into a serial, serial yeah, yeah. Right well, I'm just trying to see. get it, you know, to to make it more yeah. easy to understand. Men, women, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe is it more of like a race or is it a gender or? Um, I guess if I was going to say one thing for how to pick a target, the, the ones like uh, mental illness, people who are really depressed, people who are really down, really down on their luck. Yeah. I mean, that would be a pretty easy target because, I mean, their shields are already going to be down. So it's all a mental thing, then. It's how easy is it for the demon to get into you and take control. Exactly. And when they take control, can they actually, like, control your body? It takes a while. It's kind of like a virus setting in. Oh. And they can actually move you around and do stuff that you would not normally do. Right. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure we talked about before, like, voice changing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Is that something that you've seen when you've been doing, like... Uh, getting rid of demons from people is that something you've seen i haven't seen a voice change but i've seen like drastic personality change really like when the demon would slide in where you know all of a sudden all the facial features will change and you know they'll just get really snippy and nasty and huh that i would love to see that in real life like see something really because i've no no like (laughs) i'd love to see like uh (laughs) kind of creepy i'd love to see somebody in that stage and then how do you get them out of that because that'd be amazing to me just to watch I've seen it on YouTube, but you can't always believe everything you watch on the internet. No. And what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? No, it, it just, uh, it amazes me, and I've watched them, and I feel like some of them are real, but then other ones are like, there's no way that could be, yeah. you know, something like, I. but then you see some of them, and you're like, that almost seems, like I've watched one where there was a girl talking, and she had a man's voice, and you could say, well, that could have been edited, but it looked and sounded really like, it was her voice, but it sounded way too deep to be her voice. Yeah. And so I didn't know if that's something that you've seen before or if it's an actual thing that would happen to somebody. I have never personally seen it to that extent, but I'm not going to doubt that it can happen. Yeah. Well, talk about some of the things like that you've seen yeah. when you've been, because you've had the experiences. You talked about this before, um, where you've had to go to people that have called you mm-hmm. when they've been under, what do you call it, the influence or under the, their they're possessed by a demon. How do you, you know, tell us some of the things that you've seen when you've done this. Well, the one that I had to do was uh, the son of a friend of mine. And she's like, yeah, there's something really, you know, wrong with him. His personality has just changed. He's become so dark. And Mm. I mean, he was kind of goth, but I mean, he wasn't like, you know, the South Park uh, conformist. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But no, I mean, you know, when, even your mother notices that you're having a drastic personality change. I mean, obviously something is up. Yeah. And then, you know, just being sensitive to the energy as soon as you're around somebody who is carrying, I mean, you're going to pick up on it because normal human energy is pretty warm. Mm. You know, you can actually feel the, the life of it. Yeah. And you start getting around people who are possessed or, you know, hitchhikers or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's cold. And you could tell right away that he was possessed. Yeah. Really? So then what's the first step you take when approaching? Is it being calm or is it coming at it with really intense, mm. you know, I don't like, I'm just, yeah. you know, do you go at him and you're like, get away, you know, like, or is it more like you got to get into the mind of them? 
the best thing to do is stay calm mm. because, you know, as soon as you start getting worked up and getting angry, yeah. I mean, you're just playing right into the game. Yeah. So the first thing we did was whip up a batch of demon dust using, you know, household stuff. Like? Uh, what was it? Cayenne pepper, basil, sage, rosemary, thyme, uh, black pepper. Uh, I can't even remember what we all used. Wasn't but... sea salt one of them or no? Uh, yeah, I can't remember salt. you talking about that. Yeah, yeah, sea salt is the best. Salt of the earth. Yeah, well, and, and you did. If I remember right, did you do you sprinkle it around them to kind of keep the energy right there so yep. that you can target it directly? Yep. I kind of remember you mentioning that. So once you have it entombed in that area with this person, then you can kind of attack it directly. Mm -hmm. What what then happens at that point? Well. This particular case, we used the demon dust and had him rub it in the center of his forehead or at the third eye. Oh. And then kind of right in this area over the heart. Okay. And had them had him start doing that uh, two to three times a day. Oh. Well, after the first time, you could just kind of see that momentary jolt. Really? And, wow. uh, you know, I spent the night there that night. And that night, the shadow of that thing was standing there maybe six feet away from me. And it was mad. Really? Like, it stood there all night and just glared at me. So did the, it left his body and came to you because mm -hmm. it knew that you were trying to get it out? Mm -hmm. So at that point, is it not? Is he not possessed by it, or is it still attached to him? It was still attached, but it had broken loose, and it was trying to stop me and his mother from uh, finishing the job. Really? Physically stop you from doing it? Yeah. What did it do to you? Uh, all it really did was stand there and just glare at me. I mean, your average Joe, if you have this big, you know, solid shadowy figure standing there just staring daggers at you, you know, most people are just going to pee their pants. Did it look like a human or what did it look like? It was a humanoid silhouette. Really? Mm -hmm. That is scary. <laughs> I'd probably leave if How'd I How'd you fall it. asleep? <laughs> well, first I rolled over and scratched my butt and then I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't worry about it? No, no, I wasn't too worried. <laughs> Why I I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Why would you be able to just go to bed with this creature standing there, knowing? Are you are you knowing that it's not going to do anything to you? Well, in a situation like that, I never go to bed uh, unarmed, as it were. Mm. So you were prepared. I was prepared. What kind of stuff did you have with you? Oh, what did I have at the time? I had various crystals, uh, a few oils. Definitely the salt. Yeah. This is a good lead-in because I've waited a half hour for the weapons on the, yeah. <laughs> on the table this, here. What, is this something... All right, so let's pull... What is this right here? What are we What are we dealing with? This is the big stuff. This I call my crystal pistol. Applewood frame. Watch out, he's pointing at the <laughs> <teeth>. <laughs> Get this in the way, not me. <laughs> Expecto Patronus. <laughs> yeah. Applewood wow. frame because the... Uh, the properties of Applewood are that it does go to both sides, the physical and the metaphysical. Wow. And for people listening, he's got a piece of wood here, and it has a... What's on the end here? That's angelite. Angelite, okay. And then Did there's... you touch it? No, I didn't touch oh, it. I didn't touch it. Okay. Did you touch my blue ball? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't touch your ball. I see what, a, uh... a gem trigger, a crystal trigger. <laughs> what are these symbols right here? Uh, they're just different Nordic runes for protection, purification, oh. stuff like that. Really? Wow. And then wrapped around the wood, you have something in there with twine. Or what is this holding it together? That is leather and fake sinew. Really? That is selenite. And the nice thing about selenite is it's constantly purifying. Okay. So you can't corrupt selenite. You don't want to get it wet because it will break down in water. Oh, okay. But selenite is basically what anybody and everybody uses to kind of cleanse their area. Oh. Interesting. And then crystal, right? right yep, here? a quartz trigger. Kind quartz? of use that as kind of my contact point. Wow. Are you sending energy through there then? Not at the moment because I don't want Ethan to start doing weird <laughs> yeah, things. I want some graphics to put in there. <laughs> some special effects. And then, all right, so it goes out into Amethyst. three yeah. points. Yep. And is that uh, three, is that having to do with the Holy Trinity? Is uh, that religious or is that just by mistake? No, actually, the the real idea behind the fact that, you know, you can flip it around is you're not always going to have enough time to, you know, actually charge up your gun because the gun is completely reliant on my energy. Hence, you know, the contact points. Yep. Yep. So, uh, obsidian amethyst and, uh, Oh, I can never remember the name of that one. It's like a green, a greener Jade type color. Yeah. But, uh, 
the properties of this one are actually oral protection. Really? But the nice thing is, you know, you can flip it around and use it kind of like a little beast claw. Oh. So if you got something bum rushing you, you just flip it around and <laughs> try it. Thank you. Oral, the... oral protection. Do I not need to go to the dentist for a while now? <laughs> <laughs> Amethyst. What's, that what's that on there for you? That's my birthstone. Uh, that... Amethyst is... I have a lot of that. Usually for uh, keeping your energies in balance. Oh. There we go, Damon. There we go. I noticed that, I Damon. That. Yeah. <laughs> you, that, uh, that imbalance to a lot of the rocks. So... Uh, <laughs> This wood that you're talking about, what mm-hmm. was the what was the meaning behind that again? That uh, apple, apple wood, wood was traditionally used by witches for their wands, just because it was for the physical and the metaphysical. Wow. Also, that's crazy. side note, it's great on smoked pork. That it is. <laughs> yeah. it's really. Um, Tom, did you make this? I did. That's pretty cool. I actually. think this is one of the few tools I've made where I didn't bury something in my hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, that's crazy. And what? How do you, you're talking about charging it or using your energy. Mm-hmm. How do you, I mean, cause it's not, a, it's not a normal gun. You don't just pull a trigger. How do you charge? How do you charge something like this? Well, as I said before, you know, <clears throat> there's the idea, you know, of magic. Yeah. Well, you know, if you really get down to it, magic is, you know, the using of your will to, you know, kind of push forth the energies and use them how you need them. <clears throat> mm. Kind of the same idea, except, you know, I'm pushing forth my energies into my hand, putting it right through that contact point, and it's basically putting a battery to a circuit. Really? Mm-hmm. So you're directing your energy into this thing? Yep, this is a conduit for me, and then it uses the wow. different metaphysical properties of the stones and the wood to uh, create an effect. Interesting. So mm-hmm. is this something that I could pick up, or Damon or Colin, or is it something that you know how to use and direct your energy to that you would really be the only one that could pull it off? I'm sure there's a handful of people that could, but I mean, if you three were messing around with it, you know, you'd probably just, you know, take a Charlie's Angels pose and then be about the. <laughs> we'll each take it. a stone. We'll focus on one stone. Yeah, there yeah. we go. I'll there put we go. our hands on. Well, you have something else yeah, here, too. Is that too. your pendulum? Is that the. Or is that. No, this is actually something I made. Oh, it's, it's not connected. Because. Oh, you made that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is all stone beads. Let's see. What do I got? There's sunstone, angelite, moonstone, uh, Chinese obsidian amethyst hematite wow and then on the end you have a is that a wolf yep that's a obsidian wolf wow so the idea behind this you know any hunter will tell you that we're always fighting the hidden war Mm. the problem with fighting a hidden war especially like the ones that we do yep you sometimes have to deal with things in public oh so obviously in public you know I'm not going to want to pull that out. <laughs> no, no, I'll get shot. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. It looks kind of intimidating. So, I mean, something like that, you know, put it in your hand, wrap it around your knuckles a few times. Oh. Focus your energy through that. Almost like brass knuckles a little bit. Yeah. Wow. So, you don't actually. For the any, energy. Yeah, the energy. I was going to say, you don't actually pull any of this stuff out and, like, stab physically something. Well, maybe this side, but that's usually if you're in a condition where it's coming at you. It's like that's a serious situation. Yeah. Most of the time, it's energy related, right? Yes. That's a lot of. You've never had to actually use anything to where you know the to, end was a little chipped on there i saw it might have well been have you d- have you used it before like have you actually had to <coughs> physically attack something that was coming at you uh, there have been several times really mm-hmm. oh that's got to be the scariest thing i couldn't imagine how do you know what's coming can you you can see it you can see it really can anyone see it or certain people <sighs> depends what you're dealing with because there's different types. There's different types. Which are the ones you can see for people out there wondering? Usually it's like the shadow people, the shades. You know, if you get something strong enough, you're like, you know, it's October. Things are going to come through a lot stronger than, you know, yep. any other time of the year. Yep. Well, what would be, well, that was one of the questions I had on here because around this time, Halloween time, when there's a lot of, is there evil, more evil around, or is there more positive energy around for people excited about it? Yeah, is the air thinner? And Well, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, do, is there more... People talk about this time of the year and say evil's out. And negative energy. Negative energy. But I would think more excitement and people are, you know, Halloween, candy, excite, like costumes, or is that not how it is? So... The way it works is, you know, usually from the middle of September till the middle of November, the veil thins. The veil is kind of like our semi-permeable membrane between us and, you know, other dimensions. Oh. Like, if you think about it, think of Earth as the zero point. Yeah. 
And then you have equivalent points going up and equivalent points going down. Mm. Now, depending on where your breach happens, where the hole opens, and how deep it runs will determine what's coming through. Now, why would there be a hole opening up in the veil um, around this time of the year? Well, the that second blood moon, which happened in uh, October, that oh. actually put cracks in the veil. Really? Yeah. So now there's permanent things coming in? It lasted until Halloween. Really? For whatever reason that year, as soon as Halloween hit, it was like somebody hit uh, Fast Rewind, and everything just got sucked back. Really? So right now, are we? what would you say it is right now that you can feel? Well, I can definitely feel uh, a very specific cemetery up on the hill. I can feel <laughs> a very specific building up on top of the hill really? that exists on a void. Oh, you were talking about this last time. Yep. And we're not going to mention names, obviously. Can't mention names. But you were talking about this, and we never really got into that. What made you figure out about this void? Because it fed on me the whole time I was there. Really? I mean, you could literally feel it like chewing on your energy. Really? Why would why would there be something like that? Why would it be... Is it created or is it natural? Uh, typically, a void is the byproduct of either a very violent action okay. or... A very bizarre spatial event. Huh. So when you look at... I know Mankato has a history with the Dakota, and there was a slaughter down mm-hmm. the street. Um, let's just bring... That's obviously not what we're talking about, but let's just mention that as an example. Would there be some kind of dark energy left behind from that... Oh, absolutely. ...slaughter that is still around to this day? Absolutely. Really? The souls themselves may have passed on, Yeah. but that much violence and just that kind of bloodshed and just think of the absolute hatred that was going on there. It was all the negative energy? I mean, these people had to be completely bloodlusted, you know, over the course of this war, and they finally catch all these people and they publicly execute them? Yeah. I mean, I bet those people were just braying like bloodlusted donkeys. Wow. And that kind of negative energy doesn't dissipate. So you... Did did you know that Henry Whipple saved a lot of Indians? Really? The gentlemen I'm reading about that were connected to Wilder? I'm glad you... It just keeps coming up. I know, because it's so interesting, because he... There was like 300, like they wanted to... To execute, hang, and he saved. I, he saved a lot of them. Well, for like people that don't Abraham know, Lincoln. talk about um, what you're talking about. Like, let well, people we know. we yeah. For previous episodes, we had talked about what uh, Ethan hit in his car. Yeah, um, and attributed that to the Wilder Demon. Yeah, and in that there was a school in Wilder, Minnesota, which is five miles out of town from Wyndham, Minnesota. Do you know where Wilder where is? We Tom? All grew I'm up. sure I've gone through it in passing. Yeah, if you're and going down to Iowa, you don't even know you're passing through. It's a short. It's a small town. Very large people. school that they they founded there, and it, it was the Breck School, the original Breck School, which is now in the cities. Yep. Um, at one point, they had up to I believe 500. Like mostly farm kids that were Which from the area, rural kids come. Unbelievable. And they, unbelievable and, and learned skills. And Henry Whipple was uh, who ran it, it was one of the founders and um, ended up, you know, he he grew up all over. He's like in New York. And uh, I'm kind of, I'm reading his biography right now and I get stalled out a lot. But And you figured out that he saved a lot of Indians. At- he did. He, he was, Abraham Lincoln was the president at the time and he wanted to distinguish between, um, you know, not all Indians were out to kill a white man. They weren't all savages. I mean, yep. there were instances that would arise, you know, where maybe a couple would wander off and you would hear that story and then that yep. would get everybody going. Yep. Um, and then they wanted to hang 300 of them. And, wow. you know, I can't speak to the fact of how he's related to the Mankato. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, you just know that, that he far. saved people from mm-hmm. that time mm-hmm. period. That connection, yeah. Wow. And was, and was also, you know, um, intermixing with them and, you know, being new to the land. I mean, this was early, you know, middle 1800s, late 1800s. And wow. The school and the school and uh, Breck was like, I think it closed at the uh, beginning of the 1900s. And wow. Well, I kind of want to tell, I wanted to tell Tom about this story. Hopefully it didn't bore anybody. It is a lot interesting. No, I'll it's to keep interesting reading. stuff. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. And c- what happened, Tom, was last year I was driving to Worthing or back from Worthington, which is um, right in the Iowa border, to Wyndham, which is where we're from. And I hit something with my car, mm-hmm. and it had giant wings, and it was not an eagle. It was not a, it was not a deer. It was flying, and it was huge. And other people told me they saw similar things. One guy came on Facebook and said he saw giant winged demon looking things standing off to the side of the road. And there's a cemetery right where I hit this thing, mm-hmm. and it's literally right there. We we went and did an investigation. 
And after I hit it, it actually lifted my car off the ground and um, it ca- kind of wrecked my bumper. We went and walked back and we couldn't find anything on the road. Um, nothing. You got a hair sample? Got a hair sample. So I was going to ask you, is it possible that uh, I physically, my car interacted with a something from another dimension or demon or whatever it might be? Because we call it the wilder demon. We have no idea what it is. Well, it's easy to call something a demon. Yeah. I yeah. mean, look at the Jersey Devil. They call it a devil, but I mean, people claim they've seen it. But I mean, if you actually tonight. see the Jersey Devil, I mean, God only knows what it really is. Yeah. What do you say, Damon? Sorry, the devils are playing tonight. Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> um, but is it possible? Where, have you ever heard of that before? Where something like a vehicle could it connect or like crash into a demon, like a devil or a whatever, an entity, if you want to, like whatever you want to call it? Is that a thing, or is that something that I? It was actually an animal. Um, it could happen. I mean, the odds of it doing significant damage like that are probably pretty limited. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking it must have been some kind of a cryptid. That's okay. That's what I want to hear. Because, so how can you differentiate uh, cryptid or what? Like, maybe we should break this down for people at home. Like, how do you differentiate a cryptid, demon, shadow people? Do they each have different physical physicalities that you'd be able to describe to maybe figure out what it is well i mean cryptids are just as alive as you and me okay you know skinwalkers vampires werewolves oh you know so your bigfoot, jersey devils bigfoot fall in that category yep. bigfoot really? falls under a cryptid wow well and that's the weirdest thing because sherman said that he thought was that sherman or was it somebody else well i think it was sherman what are you gonna say thought that bigfoot was paranormal yeah well, yeah the first times we is that something uh, that you'd go along is cryptid considered paranormal or no i would not consider cryptid paranormal okay so then okay two different opinions um what would you say there's is a jersey Ooh, devil yeah that's a neat picture see what i saw had wings though had giant Caught on wings. camera i thought maybe we see jack hughes i'm oh, sorry he didn't score goals <laughs> yeah kind of looks like the fawn from uh pan's labyrinth that's what yeah. i was saying it kind of does look like it and what, you didn't even say Jeepers Creepers when you brought up the demon. This no, time. I didn't. That's what, That's what I would compare it to. Is there a cryptid that has wings like that? Like a giant bat almost? Mothman. Mothman. There we go. Mothra. Is, but there, I've never heard of the Mothman being spotted around here. Isn't that East Coast? Uh, from what I've heard, the Mothman will actually show up anywhere where you're about to have a major catastrophe. Really? But, I mean, there's plenty of cryptids. I mean, there's Thunderbirds, you know, Quetzalcoatls. I like, the, just, I like how you just throw out East Coast. Like you're you're getting very well versed in. Yeah. <laughs> isn't isn't Mothman like East Coast? Yeah. Thing? Like, well, I'm, it's I'm not a West Coast. I've heard of that before. There we go. Something like that. That's... This is my Halloween costume this year. <laughs> yeah. Really? What is that right there? No. Oh, you're okay. Paint your suit, okay. Your you looked at this as the Mothman. That's actually probably what I'd compare it to. That is what I mean. It did, I didn't see. That red looks eyes. like sloth, man. But if you're talking wingspan, like this would be what I would say. What we hit, like it was giant. It was it was like a human with giant wings. Is mm-hmm. what I compare it to. And I don't know. I don't know what it is. Or I want to bring the hair sample I have to. I don't know if you can get that DNA tested or something. You'd Locked. almost have to find uh, like a vet or a zoologist. And- yeah. I don't even know if they have the capabilities to take hair and figure out what it is. That seems like a scientific, like, CIA type thing, or like police investigation type thing. CSI, Cryptid Division. <laughs> there we go. I mean, they could look at it under a microscope and give you an opinion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, Ethan, if I saw you have what the fake on here. What? We get to play one? I do have that, but I wanted to ask Tom what his giant... <laughs> um, his giant. This looks intimidating. Yeah. This thing. Yeah, the, the, yeah he's gonna grab it here. Office. People at home. He has a giant. Colin, stand up with him. He's gonna see what this <laughs> yeah. works. We have a well, giant. It's, an it's got a crystal. Holy cow! That is a staff. A big staff. Actually, that's called a cleansing stick. Oh, really? Yep. There's a wow. citrine point. You know, you can see. Right under here is a big old piece of selenite. And right down at the bottom here, wrapped in copper and fake sinew, is an amethyst point with the point pointing downward. What's fake sinew? Because you mentioned that before. Um, well, you know how the Native Americans would use like animal sinew for like various like, like arrowheads cuts. and stuff or, like that. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's fake stuff. It's okay. totally fabricated. What's the black on there? Like underneath the uh, the fake sinew? Oh, that's just leather. Okay, leather. Okay, I was wondering, because it looked kind of like painted on Tom, there. is this another one that you made? This is another one that I made. 
Could, for people, can you buy this stuff, or is this something you have to go out and actually make? No, I go out and just make it. But is there a website where you can like people can go and buy buy a staff? I think like, you got to kind of feel connected to it. I think, I think you got to like make it. Like yeah, I don't. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I mean, can like, is there a website? Like I, I don't know yeah. where you get some of this stuff. I don't know if you make it all. Like these um, these stones here are carved to perfect points. Are you doing that, or is that no? That... No, I. I go on Wish and get some of that stuff. Oh, you can? Okay. Or, you know, various crystal vendors and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't know if you were... Because you talked about, like, Christie's crystals before mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I didn't know if you were getting them and then carving them yourself. Or no, I'm skilled, I'm not I that tech. skilled. <laughs> well, impossible. I mean, I, I didn't know if there's... I mean, anywhere. I have a rock tumbler. I could tumble some <laughs> yeah. smooth rocks. I didn't know if there's, like, some eBay-type website for... Etsy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's, like, a demon website. So is for, the amethyst on the other side of that one? Is it double-pointed or where's that? No, at? it's single-pointed. Single-pointed. So what do you what do you use this uh, tool for here? Do you call it the cleansing stick? Well, call it the cleansing stick. Well, I had a shadow person oh a good couple months ago, and uh, the shadow stick or the shadow stick, the cleansing <laughs> stick. You know, you can actually draw your barriers to keep them from moving. Really. And then if you bang it on the floor like that, you can actually feel like the energy ripples coming out from that. We really? Call your neighbors underneath. Yeah, they, they felt it. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's instead of uh, like Tom already scared them. Instead, yeah, instead of drying uh, like the dust around, mm-hmm. you you tap that and it create like a force field almost. Is that what it is? Uh, think of it more like a uh, like an energy burst. Oh, okay. And that would be something that could. Uh, scare? Is that what you're trying to It'll do? It'll push it? them away. Oh, really? Because wow. I've had a couple that would attack, and then I would just give it a big old boom, and it would send them flying. I'm picturing Tom right now with the with that with the stones wrapped around his fist because he can't carry that around, just jumping in there and pounding the ground, you know, like you see. Yeah, like kind of like a superhero movie, yeah. kind of. Like, is that yeah. something that or could Game be of done, Thrones. or is that? I had to say Game of Thrones. I yeah. can't say I've tried it. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I mean. Realistically, I mean, you're taking all natural material and applying it to all natural material. Oh, but it's Tom's not. a big guy. Let's try it right here in the. <laughs> yeah, I think our neighbors. Hey, new short up. film: Tom Urban, yeah. the Demon Hunter. That'd yeah. be exciting. There we go. The Roman Reigns of Demon Hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Tom like Urban the... Legend. Tom Urban Back Legend. Back again. <laughs> <laughs> we could get Brock Lesnar. Dog the Bounty Hunter, Demon Edition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mano y mano. Yeah. One island, yeah. two hunters. <laughs> there we go. How often do you get phone calls, Tom? Are people calling left and right? Is there a demon epidemic? Is it's that it's got to be busy right now? Is that is this a busy time of the year? This for... is usually my busy season. Really? Yeah. Wow. I that is this whole thing blows me away. Like people, everyone. I mean, I feel like most of the people watching this have never seen or heard this level. Well, it's interesting. I'm myself included. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, about... I learn stuff every time Tom comes too, because I it's something that most people don't have to worry about or think about. But mm-hmm. then you have that side there are people that do get affected by these things and they need someone to help them Mm -hmm. and you're the guy yep so most people don't have to worry about it we're just learning about it in case something ever were to happen exactly and that's what blows me away about it is because i didn't know any of this stuff yeah you know so it's crazy to me one more question for you um tom before we get into the game sure who created the modern pop culture red demon like your black horns like how is because we asked we talked to Michael Cimino about who created the modern green alien with the big eyes and the big head like oh. you know someone's got to come up with this stuff and popularize it so how did this become demon when this probably doesn't look like a demon at all um, actually I do know the answer to that I'd love to hear because that's been a question of mine for a while so from what I have actually followed is uh, people actually saw a satyr you know part goat part person. Oh, okay. And, you know, satyrs are usually pretty joyful and dancing around with their little, you know, pipe flutes and, you know, just generally happy. Oh, like from Narnia. like the, Yeah, okay. like Mr. Tumnus. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Except, you know, with good facial hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm picturing Jim Brewer doing Gold Boy. I don't know if you've ever seen <laughs> yeah. So, wait, this, that's what they, they saw that and this is what they, they drew from that. They basically interpreted it as that, yes. How did it get, become red? That, Some things just need a color fire. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, fire. There we go. I'm just. I mean, it's always been something I've wondered why the mustache, the pointy beard, the mm-hmm. two horns. You've you got know. a pretty classic mask here. This is about as iconic, like classic demon. I, I remember dressing up 
with the, kind the of that devil, mask with yeah. the with the plastic yeah. box outfit. This which, is kind of like an '80s looking mask. So you need to check out city. Halloween in a Box coming up. I need to watch that documentary before. We yeah, begin so I I'm talk interested. About that. Yeah. So okay, so this Seder thing is an actual thing that like a cryptid, or is it an mm-hmm. actual? Uh, really? Mm. So people have seen it in modern days, or is this older? They were typically uh, European. Really? Yeah. Huh. Because I thought that was just something like the the people who created Narnia came up with. I didn't mm-hmm. know that was an actual thing. Wow. What's satan- uh, satanic and demons? Would their most uh, one they connect with would be a goat animal? Then do you think, or do you have a? Little, how come like the how Danny? come the Church of there's a Church of Satan right there's there's, a, there's the Satanic Church yeah how come they tie the goat the creature and a ram horse Baphomet too. yeah Baphomet yeah how come they tie that into the demon demon demonic type stuff well I mean Baphomet's one of the heavier hitters in the uh, hierarchy of demons really yeah so who sits at the top is it Satan yeah and then underneath him um would it be Baphomet no, Beelzebub is in there. Oh man, is there a hierarchy? Like we could look up. Is yeah, like, you could actually look, up, look the it up. I'm interested at what this is because that thing right there. Yeah, it is. Look like the yeah, Enoch. There we go. We we're just talking about that. 365 years. Wow, people lived a lot longer back then. Is it H I spelling on the Ethan H-I- Clare show? Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Really learning every day. E-R. E-R, calm. Hey, there you go. Proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the... All right, so here we go. No, you got to... No, that's not right. What is that word? Ba- B-A-A-E-Z-U. Okay, so which one should we click on here, Tom? You see any that are... Come on, go back to images. Any of these that are worth looking at? Oh, right there. Go to that f- like fifth or sixth one over. It's a white chart right there. Does that one, because that's got Satan and then Moloch, the Quil, Quilpa? Demon Kings and Orders. Does this look about right, Tom? Because there's Beezlebub that you're talking about. Yep. So, what is, do I, does this make sense to you? Like Queen Matil and ba- Belial, Leal, Ale? God, these are some I weird I feel like words. you shouldn't say these like three times. I know. I'm going to like call, summon. <laughs> can you summon something by saying their names? Uh, typically not. Okay. Okay. We've come for your dog, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's <juice>. showtime. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What does this make sense to you, though, Tom? Like looking at this. Yeah. Um Why does are these well, arrows Lilith. pointing? Yeah, Lilith. What? What are these arrows pointing in it? This doesn't look like a typical hierarchy chart to me. No, it almost looks like uh, a very messed up version of uh, the World Tree. Yeah, it kind of does. Well, it's on Pinterest, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks old. The quill, what, you know what that word is, Tom? Quill, clipoth? Cl- have you ever seen that before? Quill, I can't even say that. The clippeth tree? Clippeth. Demonic kings and orders. We should Google it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Colin, look, look up what that word means, and then we'll play the game here. Because, I don't know, I'm, this, to me, is really interesting. That someone was able to, is this go is all the tree? way back to... Does this go all the way back to the, like Enoch? Like, is it is that where they're getting this from, or is this someone came up with this? I'm sure. I'm sure over the years, you know, the various texts on demonology, you know, they just keep expanding on it. Yep. Full article covers elements of the histo- history of Lurianic Kabbalah, the cosmology, a more in depth description of the sip. God, they have some words in here. And they're evil counterforces. You're going down a rabbit hole really quick here at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this could be something we could dive into a whole nother time because there's a lot of, like, maybe I should t- give you a heads up, Tom, about going into, like, the history of demons. Like, that mm-hmm. could be another whole nother podcast topic. But we could jump right into the what the fake because we haven't played that in a while. What's what the fake, Ethan? The what the fake this week is we are going to give uh, three... Demon names. I'm glad we brought this up, actually, because this will be... Uh, I'm sure Tom will get this right, but we'll all get it wrong. I mean, I know it, obviously. We'll let him answer first. Though. Yeah. Well, no, you guys get answer <laughs> first. Um, so it's three demon names. I made one of them up, and two of them are actual demon names. And so no Google here, no no uh, One's over. help. And you have to figure out which one is the fake demon name. Okay. So, and because I know they're very, I can barely pronounce. So one's them. fake. I, I always try to listen. Yeah. One of one's them. Fake. One of them's fake. Two of them All are right. real. So bring up the first one, Colin. Do you have graphics with them? First demon name. Like, are they? 
No, there. I mean, there's a there's a word. Colin will probably hit the answer one first. Colin Oof. probably hit. Okay, Boer. That is the first one. Or Bauer Boer. So, don't no one say what they think yet. We're gonna go through all three of them. Next one, Orneo. That is the second one, and the third one, Melfis is the third one. So come on, go back They're to one. They're all good. Go back to one. Did you make up the fake one? I made up the fake one. Boer. That's like probably how you try to spell beer. And Orneo, spell that Orneo, and Malthus. So those are your Malthus, three. If you made that up, that's a good one you made. Those up. are your three options. I so mean, we'll just start with Damon. Damon, which one do you think? The only reason I'm going to say the last one because it sounds like a real demon name, and I think you picked <laughs> two that are just like I tried to spell beer. I used a U. What was the next one? Orneo is like a town, and then Malthus. If you made that up, then you can make a movie or a call. I'm going to say that one. You're saying that's real. I'm saying you made that up. Okay, you're saying that's fake. Yeah. All right, Colin, what do you think? Or that's, what, that's what you wanted, right? You're thinking that one's fake? Yeah. And Tom? Hmm. I got to go with Orneo. Orneo. Okay, go to the third one, Colin. Orneo is fake. Oh, good job, Tom guys. and Colin both got yeah. it right, so yeah. that is a fake one. I, I just Were I, you staring at a box of Oreos when you yeah. came up with that one? <laughs> oh, no, I saw. I was going through demon names, and um, like I just started seeing O words, and I'm like, I'm just going to put something together here, and I'm like, Orneo. That's Melfis was way too good. I wanted to give you credit for making that up. That's Me, like, well, Melfis is, yeah, that's a real one. Uh, the, here's so go back, Colin. Go back. I'm going to read oh, this. sweet. So go back, Colin. These are what they are. So Boer, the 10th spirit. Oh, here we go. So the president is a president who appears in Sagittary, and that is his shape when the sun is there. So One, two, he's three, four, got five like five he's got five legs. legs. And I don't know Look if you've goat-ish. ever heard of this goat one before. Legs, yeah. um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this What's one before. What's that kind of lion hair? Tom. No, I haven't. See, I, they, this is what I was talking about. They use president, and I wasn't exactly Must sure what they were referring to. Just the, top yeah, guy hierarchy. Um, Colin, go go to the next one. Uh, Melphis, a grand president of hell who governs forty legions. Melphis appears as a raven or in human form with a rach, raucous voice. Ooh, and it's a raven, a, a raven with, looking creature. That's a cool well, now mascot we know what you hit. right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. I mean, a raven. Wouldn't that be a dope mascot right there? A raven, a, a dope mask. Baltimore's already yeah. got that one. I mean, it's kind of like know, angel this... wings instead of raven wings. Yeah, true. The raven's got like he's got like arms too. And okay, and one more question. He's got Tom. some cool little. When, like, they, when they say forty pants. legions, is that part of the hierarchy? Is there legions? Is that built in, or is that? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have to definitely do an episode of the podcast on history of demons and circles the hierarchy of hell. and mm-hmm. different of hell. things. Because there's so I feel like there's so many different things we could go into about. Oh, that. easily. So and we we definitely need to do research before that so we're getting everything right. Mm-hmm. Um but it has been an awesome time here. Great time covering this stuff. And what are some uh final things wrapping it up here, Tom? Halloween's coming by. Evil's around. What can people do to stay safe? Call Tom. <laughs> Call Tom <laughs> if you have an issue. There you go. <laughs> Well, for starters, don't go messing around with Ouija boards or do stupid things in cemeteries. Oh, okay. And leave Glenn Cotton alone. <laughs> there you go. And for people that don't know, you can go watch that video from last year. Uh, we went to the Rapidan Holberg, right? Rapidan Holberg Cemetery. And I got scratched on my leg going right by Glenn Cotton's grave. And Tom, Tom said no. Tom but said Ethan no. Doesn't listen. And I decided that it'd be a good idea to go over there and take a look. So definitely do not go over there. Gonna have a. <laughs> Dan's going to have a tough time getting over there anyways. Yeah, construction's blocking people yeah. from getting over there. Mm-hmm. On my way up here, I saw two police cars cruising out oh, there quick. So maybe someone got scratched. So thank you very much, Tom, for coming. It's been awesome to have you back on yep, the podcast. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, we will be back next week, like I said, continuing the month of October. I was trying to come up with a cool name to like for October, like Scaretober. Or, oh, yeah. You know, like Hauntober. But I Podtober. 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 I like that. There we go. Podtober. So yeah, we'll continue <laughs> Podtober next week. Hopefully Adrian can come on and we can kind of cover the uh, ghost side of things here because now we really got into the demon side of things and hopefully everyone yeah. learned something tonight because I know I did. Yep. So thank you, Tom, for bringing this thank stuff, you. coming out here and we'll be back next week. Make sure everyone's out there sharing the podcast, getting it out there. Um, we are going to be having a big T-Win drop Next week. Next week. Now we're not giving away those three T-shirts. Week. No, well, that I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna actually postpone that to next week because we're gonna be giving away um, the shirts. And yeah, that is gonna be part of the T Win drop, which is for people that don't know our clothing brand T Win. A big winter fall drop is fall Ooh. winter drop. So that is next Switch Wednesday. Shirts, yep, everything. So that is caps, next Wednesday. Mittens, so we'll be giving away a bunch of stuff next joggers, week. Joggers. Bunch of stuff. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is the Ethan Clare Podcast Show. We will see you next week.